mentioned, I'm Daniela, co-founder of Gravity Sketch, um, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about our story. Um, our story, it's not too much about um, games or creating experiences for like going in and, you know, like enjoying an experience in VR and AR, but it's more about how do we use this technology to actually push an area in life that has been somehow really difficult and tricky in terms of technology has advanced so much. And I'm talking about 3D design. Technology has, been, has, uh, has advanced so much in the sense of we now have 3D printers, we now have CNCs, we now have a lot of ways in producing 3D content, like digital and physical, but still making it, like communicating the ideas, like the thoughts that we have in 3D in our heads and putting them out there in a digital way, it's still really, really difficult. Um, especially in the initial stages of creation. So when you're thinking about something and ideating and communicating this idea and getting feedback, um, there's like three ways of doing it, right? You can either communicate it through talking, but then I can be describing something and you can be understanding completely something different. Um, you can sketch it. If you're a master, you can manage to somehow communicate your idea, but still, it's not in 3D, so people are not going to actually understand the depth, the volume, everything that you have in your head. And then the other one is creating 3D models digitally. But the 3D models, when they're created and when you spend like hours and hours trying to create something on a computer, part of that magic of that initial intent of creativity gets lost. Um, so five years ago, my co-founder and I sat down and said, it can't be that hard to create something that will actually allow people to just think about something and somehow materialize it in some way. Um, so we decided to create Gravity Sketch, which is an intuitive software for designers and artists to create in 3D without having to know any 3D software, um, you know, how to work with 3D software at all. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about where we where we came from in terms of like creating the experience. So Gravity Sketch is the first fully immersive 3D design software for professional design pipelines. And we can say that because we're not only creating a software that will allow people to sketch something in VR and just you know enjoy it. We're creating something and that comes from our background of industrial design and working in the car industry. Um, understanding that we don't really want to for our sketches to just stay on paper or to just stay on a screen or in a VR space. We want it to flow throughout all the pipeline, the whole design pipeline, so that it can eventually go into other softwares and continue its path all the way to producing something, whether it's physical or whether it's digital. So whether you're making a car or whether you're making a character for a, for a movie. So the way that we decided to do Gravity Sketch was inspired by the spatial intelligence because we know that creative people are really strong in spatial intelligence and that has led all the, the user experience that we've created in Gravity Sketch. Um, so basically everything that we develop in it, every single way that you can create inside of Gravity Sketch, you can only create it in a way that it feels like you were creating something physical, that you were pushing, that you're sketching, that you're using your body. You don't need to think about something, break it down into like different instructions for the software to do something. And that has led to, into an experience that a lot of people that have no background in 3D and don't really want to go into 3D manage to create like crazy robots and spaceships and cars and buildings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, as I was saying, Gravity Sketch allows you to sketch something, but it also gives you all the magic that the digital tools give you. So you can allow, you can, you're able to, all your strokes, all your surfaces, everything, continue editing them, and then have like these three files, this CAD data that can flow into other softwares. Um, and that's really important for us because we, we think and we've seen throughout working with some car companies, some film companies, some game companies, that if we're just creating another software for artists and designers to like leave their first ideas in there, and yeah, maybe communicate them faster and in a better way, it's not enough. 
we're really trying to change the whole pipeline and we're already doing it with their help. It's now about merging. You don't have like this concept artist and then the people that are making the, the scenes, like creating like the actual sets for the movies as two different uh, people. Now we're starting to see how they merge and how they each one communicates to the other one what needs to get done because now they have a tool where they can all understand and speak the same language because it's so easy to just go in and, and use it. So before I go any further, I'm going to like show you a video about Gravity Sketch um, for you to understand and see what I'm talking about. So it's a single step creation. There are no uh, multiple steps for creating one piece of geometry. It's what you see, what you get. Um, and we get a lot of questions coming from how precise can it be? And for a long time, we were defending that question. We were like, well, we're not CAD, really. It's not about making something really precise. But then at some point, we started to understand that people weren't really talking about millimetric precision. They were talking about how precise it would be for them to think about something and put it out there and have all that geometry that they're imagining straight into, into space. Um, and it's really precise, and we call it uh, creative fidelity. So I'll tell you like really quick um, about the, the current way in which we're working with car companies, for example, which has a lot of similarities with other industries that we're starting to work with. So this is the original way in which they work. You have these concept artists, the designers that are creating like different side views, etc., for the, the cars that they're thinking about. And then once these designs get selected, then they get passed to the 3D modeler. So there's another person that has had so much years of experience creating in 3D with these complex softwares that needs to be there for them by the time they're like, okay, this is my final sketch try to do something that looks like that. And then this 3D modeler needs to interpret these 3D um, these, like, perspective sketches and put them into 3D. And somehow there's like this back and forth between the designer and the 3D modeler. And it takes a lot of time for the design to actually be what the designer had in their head. And then eventually it gets uh, passed to making it into a, a clay model because obviously they need to understand the perspective, they need to understand the depth, they need to understand the size of the car and how the, the shapes and the lines and the curves uh, look like in real life. Um, with Gravity Sketch, what we've seen, so for example, this is a car that has been sketching Gravity Sketch um, completely. Right now what we're seeing is that people, designers create directly in 3D, so no more 2D sketching on a piece of paper or on Photoshop. And then that is like a 3D file already that goes straight into um, being able to render it and view it in VR. So you're already understanding the depth, the perspective, the size of the car. And then eventually gets passed to CAD to either start working on the production side of things or to create this, this uh, clay model. But you don't need to be doing multiple clay models for one idea. You can just end up doing one or two at the end. Um, and we've seen that we've reduced the design cycle for 60% now with the people that are using Gravity Sketch. And this is another one. So this, um, this artist, Pierre Robeno from Ubisoft, he was uh, using Gravity Sketch. Um, and first we thought that he was an expert in designing 3D content. Uh, but then when we spoke with him, he was like, I've never used 3D software in my life. Um, thank you, Gravity Sketch, for allowing me not to, um, you know, like not to have to learn 3D. Um, and in 10 minutes, he was able to like just start using it. Those are the stories that we really love. Um, so the first image is just Pierre sketching that mech in, in Gravity Sketch, and then passing it to Keyshot for rendering it, then passing it to Photoshop, his natural way of working to put all the extras and then making a final idea of what this game uh, environment would be. So 
Like this, we have multiple stories. Each one of them uses Gravity Sketch in a slightly different way because there are no rules. There is no way for us to let them, to tell them, okay, this is like how you should be using Gravity Sketch. Um, the way that they use it is just basically like if you give someone a, piece, a pencil, they'll, they'll write, they'll sketch, but each one of them will do it in their own way. And that's what we want with Gravity Sketch. So now I'll hand the microphone to Nick Baker, who is one of our users, uh, and a really amazing one, for not just me to tell you how amazing Gravity Sketch is, but for him to do it. Hey guys, uh, I'm Nick, and I am an industrial designer based out of New York City. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with industrial design, Danielle kind of touched on it. Industrial design is the design of actual products. So physical um, objects, like the chair you're sitting in or the water bottle you're drinking from. And so I've been working with Gravity Sketch for maybe about, I don't know, almost, we're coming up on a year now. Um, I bought the Oculus Rift last summer. Here's a few videos of it. Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, so I bought the Oculus Rift last summer and was talking to my friend and he was like, oh, you should try out this, this program, this sketching program. Um, and I started trying it out and, you know, like Dan Danielle touched on, it's so intuitive. I can just take my idea straight from my head to a physical or, or a, a virtual um, object. And it's great to be able to like really evaluate the object and adjust things, tweak the surfaces. And then I can jump into a rendering software like Keyshot, render out this chair, um, and it looks very realistic. And you know, I, I sketched up this chair in maybe 30 minutes and rendered it out in another 30 minutes. And the, fu uh, the funny thing is, is that I post these videos, these little sketch videos online, and the sketch videos take longer to edit <laughs> than it does to actually make the object. Um, so there's a few other videos here I can show you guys. Um, but I did want to say, if you want to see more of these kind of sketch videos and more of the work that I've been doing um, and kind of how Gravity Sketch can be uh, applicable to industrial designers today, check out my Instagram at Nick P. Baker. Um, there's a lot more of these kind of fun, quick edit videos up there. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I've found that Gravity Sketch has bridged this gap between sketching and CAD. You know, before I sketch something on paper and then I have to take that 2D, you know, image and try to translate it into this very rigid uh, 3D modeling software. And it's really tough. Um, and, you know, like Danielle said, you lose a lot of that emotion. Um, so being able to sketch it already in 3D is, is amazing. Um, and also it's great for the clients. You know, I've had, I've, I've been experimenting with uh, showing these gravity sketches to clients. Because um, sometimes, you know, a client can't look at a 2D sketch and really get the full picture. Um, and gravity sketch is nice because I can upload it to Sketchfab, which is an online uh, kind of 3D uh, model site. So I can just send my client a link and they can view the 3D model right on the computer and be like, oh, yeah, this is exactly what I envisioned. Um, so I've been experimenting with, experimenting with that a bit, and I, you know I hope one day that I can completely get rid of you know my full like clunky CAD software and just design everything in VR. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I think we have some time for some questions, or maybe. Um, very interesting uh, work and, and great product. I, I have not personally used it. And I'm wondering when I was just looking at the at the video that you were showing, Nicholas, that, that had um, showed a headset and was showing the you know the 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 time based creation. Is that something that you just sort of get for free when you're doing a sketch with Gravity Sketch, or was that something you like a post production thing? Yeah, the the actual videos here our post-production, so I've used a screen recording software to record my process, and then I'll export that and cut it up into a video. 
And it's also nice because Gravity Sketch has this first person view that you're seeing now, and then also the third person view, which you saw before. So you can switch that on the screen. So the headset, that when we see that on there, that's been added in, or that's part of the third person view? That's part of the third person view, yeah. Thank you. And you're always welcome to come and try it out. We're at one of the booths. So, uh, so just, uh, if you're just. I forgot. Okay. Uh, but it's just like coming out, you'll see it. It's that, <laughs> that row. <laughs> Say, for example, I hired you to work on something with me, and I wanted to work collaboratively with you. Can I put on an Oculus Rift and be in your environment as you are creating? At the moment, you can, but in a couple of months, you're going to be able to. So we're, we're doing that with the car companies, that you can have remote collaboration with multiple people in the same room, um, and eventually it's going to be available for the consumer. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for that because I've convinced so many of my friends to get the software and everything, so I can't wait to collaborate with my friends. So. Hi, can you turn it into pixel, I mean, uh, millimeter perfect engineering design so that you can send to Shapeways or someplace to be printed? You, you sort of can. At the moment, we don't have measurements. It's coming in at some point during the year. Um, so in a way, and the way that we've seen other people do it in terms of, for example, sending it to print, is they bring an element that they know it measures a certain amount or it's one unit, like a little cube, and that will be kind of their, their, their reference for then exporting it into like 3D printing. I've done a little bit of that. I've, what I do is I'll take the sketch and export it to Rhino, which is a 3D CAD software, um, and then size it appropriately in that software. And then I have exported it to my 3D printer and 3D printed stuff out. Um, it, you know. The more complex it is, the, diff the more like cleanup you have to do. But eventually, I would hope that there's a seamless transition. Uh, I have a question for Nick. Uh, you said uh, that uh, you would like to replace your CAD software with uh, Gravity Sketch as soon as possible. So the question is, what was keeping you from doing that right now? Yeah, I, I think I kind of touched on it a, a little bit, is that it's it's still a in my profession it's still very much visualization like it's amazing to get my ideas out of my head into virtual software uh, or into this 3D space um, but taking the actual CAD from this to like a production ready like chair um, there's a lot of steps involved in that um, and I I envision a future where you know that software will be able to do that. Um, but right now, like, the measurements aren't there. Um, and then some of the surfacing, like, it's, you know, I, I'm not, like, making uh, watertight models, if, if that makes sense, in, in the software, so. It's okay, thank you. One other question, the last one. Hi, I've got two questions. One, when you do the export to bring into uh, CAD software, what um, format? can you export out as? And then second is, you know, this is all VR focused. Are you guys looking at AR as well? Um, so you can export as OBJ and IGES. Um, we're working on, on GRS, but that one is just for Gravity Sketch to be working in Gravity Sketch. Um, and we're working into doing FBX as well. Um, in terms of AR and VR, it's Gravity Sketch is multi-platform at the moment. So there's an iPad version as well. There's a Wacom version. Um, they're coming out at some point at the end of the year. Um, and what that what that means is that from the beginning we decided that we wanted to do a software that wasn't bound to one technology. Firstly, because we started it like five years ago when VR and AR were kind of like. Uh, is it really going to happen? Um, so we didn't want to like you know put all of our eggs in the same basket, but at the same time be ready for when VR and AR actually would happen. Um, and now it's happening for VR, AR. We are working with um, some of the big guys to create like the best experience possible, but it's still still not there. Um, the technology, at least. So I have I have a last question about the evolution of the 
the tools inside the software. You said you started five years ago, and um, I, I was curious, uh, if, if maybe even Nick can answer, what are the coolest features, in your opinion? Mirroring, snapping, uh, surfacing, because from what we see is a very complex and uh, optimized software. Yeah, I, so I use the stroke tool a lot, which you can see me using here. Um, but I think one of the coolest features is the surfacing tool. Um, you can kind of see me editing the surfaces right there. The surfacing tool in Gravity Sketch is mind-blowingly intuitive and easy compared to any other CAD software out there. Just because normally you have to have a lot of like really precise sketches to create you know, a very complex surface. But in Gravity Sketch, I can just make it in five seconds and then come back, edit it, tweak it, and you know it's 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 wonderful. Yes, thank you. I think it's, your software has a beautiful balance between the possibility of going freestyle and uh, then go back to a to a scheme, to a symmetry, and so on. Thank you very much, Daniela and uh, Nick. Yes.